Dave here, how are you? Today is the 21st of April 2019, Easter Sunday for us um, in the advanced parts of the world, Australia and New Zealand. And uh, I'm hoping you've had a good week and that uh, you're comfortable and we're going to hook in and do a truckload in this show. Uh, let me see, what do we got? I'm reading down the side here. Everyone's been hooking into Rocky Road and chocolates and all that kind of stuff. I have a bit more set up this week. I have the cameras down here as well. I've got cameras down the other end. Thank you to everyone on Patreon. I've been able to get a few more cables so I can string the webcams further away, which makes a huge difference, or it's going to stuff it up <laughs> totally one or the other. I'm going to read through what we've got happening. Uh, Craig Festal, DeWalt and Carbotech join forces to make some uh, simple drawers. Now, they're not companies that are sponsoring at all. Don't get that wrong. I'm going to be using machines from those companies while I'm doing it. And this is not promoting them. This is just telling you the ones that I'm using. Here's the Craig. This is my Fort Craig Foreman, which does my pocket holes very, very quickly. This is a pneumatic one hooked up to the compressor out the back, which I am running on this wireless remote control system, which is fantastic. Uh, what else are we going to do? It says, uh, hey, it's 70 millimeters longer than you thought. And I am, of course, referring to parallel clamps. Uh, now, this is something that people may be surprised. When you buy a clamp, sometimes you think, oh, it's going to be like this is an 800 millimeter clamp. Well, it's actually 870 millimeters. And I can prove that to you. I've got a tape down here, so we'll hook into this first. Oh, and one of the other things is this particular brand, they've got an Allen key hole in the end of the handle here. So I can put a six millimeter and increase tightness or put it on that way. And I'm sure it'll get in there. If, give me a sec. There it goes. And really give it some clout, push it along. So that's on their new range. I'm going to undo this and pull it back. And then we'll do a measurement when it's all the way back to there. Now you can see what we've got there. This is an 800. So, so far, it's telling me I've got 845 millimeters there, but I can sneak it even more and take this off the end. I think I can. I've done it before. <laughs> there it goes. That's a, that's a rubber grommet that stops the head going all the way off the end. And then I can take it out right to the end and possibly just past a little. So it's at that point, and now I've got, instead of just being an 800 millimeter clamp, it's 874 millimeters. Now, why am I telling you that? There was a post on the live stream, Dave Stanton's live stream um, Facebook page, asking what length the, uh, the, the, the clamps are, the parallel clamps are. If they get an 800 clamp, will it be 750 or is 800 overall? What was it? So I thought I'd clarify that for you. Okay, so that's that part. Now we've got to hook through pretty quickly on this preliminary area because I've got to build this drawer. Now you may have also noticed during the week um, I said I've got this mess to tidy up. So what we're going to do in the kitchen is Vicky has always wanted drawers in the kitchen. So we've got a few but not enough. And you know what it's like when you, you've got a cupboard and it's down low. Like if I was to try and have a look in this cupboard here, it's so much easier to pull a drawer out and you're looking straight down onto it. Well, my problem with that was I've got Jarrah doors on all the cabinets and I didn't want to destroy them and they weren't big enough to turn sideways at all and it was just going to look like it was jerry built. So what I've decided to do is leave the doors on, take all the shelves out of the cupboards and I'm going to use some of those shelves as drawer bases and I'll show you how I'm going to do the drawers with this. And I'm going to have three full extension draw glides that will let me pull the draw right out. So we're looking down on top of what's in the cupboard, not kind of ferreting around up in the back and seeing if we can find something from, you know, like the Raiders of the Lost Ark, looking for the Holy Grail. It's in there somewhere, but... Uh, so that's what we're going to do today. I've already got a head start. I said the drawers are going to have some accents and I've glued up this this morning uh, because I need to do some machining on this accent which is a piece of Jarrah 
and that's going to be at the front of the drawer. And why am I doing that? The front of the drawers are the areas where you're going to be dragging tin, uh, tins of stuff out. You know, they're going to get all the punishment. The sides and the back of the drawer, the sides, not going to get damaged at all. So for when I'm putting iron on edge strip, I try not to put that on the drawer front. We don't want to put an actual drawer front in front of the front of the drawer. D two different things, drawer front and the front of the drawer, different things. Because we're going to lose capacity of this drawer and we want to maximize what we can get in there. Now the other thing is I had to make allowance for the uh, European hinges, the, the cup hinges, whatever you want to call them, on the cupboard doors. They have thickness on the knuckle and that's around 20 millimeters. So I think I'm having to allow a little bit more. The drawer slides themselves are half an inch thick, which is around 12.7 um, thick that I have to allow. So a little bit of mucking around, but I think I've nailed it. And so that's what we're going to be doing on the show, the main part. It's seven past 11 and we're still cracking along. I haven't done any reading down the side, guys. I'm sorry, I really got to push this show along. I have Easter eggs <laughs> put around it out the property people are talking about easter eggs and chocolate um, i might have jumped the gun a little bit i've got some grandchildren coming up for lunchtime uh for, for lunch obviously uh, and uh, we'll have a little bit of an easter egg hunt and so when i put the easter eggs out this morning it was all nice and cool and shade and now the sun's out boring away the uh, easter eggs might have kind of gone into a runny mess i might have to zap out and relocate <laughs> relocate them some will be fine they'll be in the shade others are going to be in bright sun and they'll be runny as, and maybe the magpies already got them, and the kids might say, the grandchildren might say, Granddad, what's happened to these Easter eggs? They're all... And I said, well, the Easter bunny may have had diarrhea. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Uh, okay. Let me keep on looking through here. So last week's winner of the combination square set, um, I've got that, so normally I do that around the end of the show. Repairing a leg on Arthur's bench seat, which is up the end there. We'll have a look at that in a second. Um, the wood chop at the Royal Easter Show. Now, I went down to the show with Vicky last week. We had a ball. It was fantastic. I haven't been to the Royal Easter Show for about 10, maybe 15 years. You've just life has been too busy. Now I'm getting a bit older. I got a chance to do these things. And it was great. The wood chopping event. I've got a bit of video at the end here of the... Um, it was a relay. So at the beginning, the guy's chopping away on a chunk of wood between his feet. The next one, it's on a, one of these heavy metal stands and they're chopped through that. And the next one is the tree and they have to chop into the side of the tree, put a, a, a little support on it, jump up on that, chop again, up they go and they come down and go up the other side and it's a handicap. Now there is a count of a hundred between the first person to start and the last person to start and the finish was so close. Anyway, that will be towards the end of the show as well, which will be in terrific. Ah, Derek, you got the internet. I'll tell you what, I nearly didn't have the show. I, I had the program that runs this show open for quite a while, and then I went to start the, sh the stream. You might have noticed I was about a half a minute late. And it said, no, I'm not going to do it. You haven't got proper um, protocols and correct uh, identity, all that kind of stuff. And I was going, oh, my God. So I just shut it down, start it, turn it off, turn it back on again. And there we go. Presto. All right. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. I hope your week's been great. And the last thing, as I say, we us and co embellishments cases for to win uh, in Australia we, and New Zealand. We have a day called Anzac Day, and that is on the 25th of this month, next Thursday for us. It's kind of a day where we recognize the military. And it's it's a day where uh, it, 100, 101, 102 years ago on a beach at Gallipoli, I think uh, there was a, we were crammed, you know, wiped out. Uh, so it's a day that we don't try and, you know, celebrate getting, getting smashed. It's a day where we recognize the armed forces and uh, it's a tradition that's just kept on going. Uh, and so these embellishment cases are for military. There's one with the rising sign on it, which is going to be for army only. And the other three cases can go to any of the other forces, military. So thank you so much to Peter and Wendy for, for uh, putting that out there for us. Um, support the channel through Patreon and Amazon links below. If you've uh, clicked the show more button below this, if you're at a TV, you're not going to be able to do that. So I encourage you to be able to help support me. You can see that I am not a slack person. I'll show you some of the things that have been happening. Uh, this was 
this was one day last week. I threw this up. Uh, I've, I'm just under the pump. This is the building that I'm in at the moment. That's the top story, and we're just finishing cleaning off the top area there, and we're painting it all beige. Um, and 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 uh, here we go. I'm going to go to this one. This is an image of how I use the HKC to continue the um, the taper on Arthur's bench. And I'll zap up there now, and we'll have a bit of a look. So if I can find that picture there, there we go. So I'm going to go up to the other end of the shop. How cool is this? This is, you know, this is around 10 meters away from where I was just before. So you can see here, I hope you can see me. This is the leg. This was there. And I cut that off and you would have seen that happen last week. Uh, maybe it was that way. Yeah, that's it. So you would have seen that happen last week. I cut that off. And this is the piece of Merbo that I've used to replace this. And I did have a gentleman say, Dave, you need to paint the underside with epoxy to seal it. Well, I've, with epoxy, I've only seen it when, it when it goes on, the timber expands and contracts at a different rate, especially outside. And I've seen the epoxy peel off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint all of this white. Some people might say that's sacrilege, but that's just the way that it is. All the furniture at this property is white. So we'll paint all of this with a primer sealer undercoat and then we'll paint um, white gloss with a couple of coats, even underneath. And then I'm going to use these rubber feet that have got a screw up through the center. So I'll put a screw up through the center into the timber and the rubber feet will keep it elevated up above the, the moisture. And that should give it another 20 or 30 years. This is about, well, my great grandfather built this and he died in 1949. So that's... Um, near 70 years ago that he died. And so he would have made this, you know, a good 30 years before he died. So this could be 100 years old easily. I replaced the slat at the back. We've got a bit of rot in the corner here that I'm still working on, but we'll fix all of that. Vicky's been spending time sanding it all and it feels really smooth to touch. There's some parts that we've still got to finish off. And I was going to comment about this. Now, this is an interesting thing. The arm and the leg are joined by this round disc. Now, it's really, really interesting. When I was pulling it apart, I started, you know, trying to tap it off. I thought, oh, maybe it's a mortise and tenon joint in there. Well, there is, but how they've done it is there's a mortise and tenon into here, but there are three screws in this, three screws in the underside of this going into the arm. So that holds that onto there. When I took undid those screws and took the arm off, there's a dirty big screw going down beside the tenon through, the, through this kind of connecting circle into the leg there. So this is held onto that via a tenon and also a screw to stop it lifting. And then this has got the three screws holding that. And that stops any moisture coming down through here and decaying the timber. Very, very clever. All right, so that's that. I'm going to spin this camera around this way now and show you part of the setup of what I've been doing down this end. I'm going to go down to the other end and check the camera, see if it's working. I'm hoping I did the transition so that you saw everything I talked about then. Thank heavens I did. Um, all right, now I'll switch back to, that's going to look all right. All right, the main camera and there. I need to get a couple of things done here. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What we're going to do as you might notice, I've got a heap of stuff here. And these are all things that I've run through the table saw over the last couple of days. Uh, we're moving along. We're moving along. Are you finding the show interesting? I'm not engaging in chat too much. I'm just stating specifics and hooking in. Now, as I say, I have the foreman already turned on. Drawers are so good. I love drawers. And that over there. Glasses, of course there that let's take the clamps off this first now I've used one of the parts of the drawer as a stiffening board let me see if I'm looking at the camera correctly I should really have the camera over here a bit further because then I'll be looking at what's happening down here um, indeed that's that's exactly right Chris I just quickly read Chris made a comment there we remember those who died to give us the freedom we have today and that's true you know, I, I lead a fantastic life and I'm sure so many, so many others do. Uh, now I'm going to undo this.
around this one and take these out of the clamps. So as I was saying, I used one part of the, the job as a stiffening board. So rather than try and glue this tiny little eight millimeter thick piece of um, jarra to there and just have a clamp there and have a weak point in the, in the center there, I use this against it as a kind of a brace to pull it all up. Now I've used blue tape on it. I possibly didn't need to because the Type 1 3 doesn't really get a grip on, um, on melamine. So this stuff here, I use it for everything else, but melamine is just, forget it. Um, so I'll take the tape off and see how that's looking. Oh, great. Now, why am I using Jarra? I was going to use a piece of pine across the front, but I decided to go with Jarra because all the doors in the uh, kitchen are Jarra. Yeah, it just made sense. That stuff on the top there has got a finish on it. I'm going to, say, I'm going to uh, plane that off. And I'm going to use a trimmer to tidy everything up in a minute as well. And it's all for a reason. See, there's some glue there. And I can just knock it off with my fingernail. It's gone. Okay. Uh, now, I also write on, on the different pieces what I've got to do. Now, whether I've got a pocket hole or whether I'm going to domino. This one here, because I don't want vision on the side of like the particle board substrate, this is the actual front of the drawer. So it's the front and the drawer front in one hit. So we don't lose depth in the cabinet. So I have already put iron on tape there and at the other end. So when the drawer's pulled out, it's going to be clean. I don't put iron on tape on the underside. You know, there's no real need. And I've got this. This is my wear piece. This is the part that's going to be a whole lot stronger than this down here or any of that tape. And I'm going to tidy all this up in a minute. And I'm going to put a domino in there. I'm going to domino there and here and into the sides of the, the drawer as well. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to put pocket holes in the drawer base. Now, I use 16 millimeter melamine straight off as the drawer base. And you would have seen also during the week, I label my parts as I'm going along. All right. Now, the, uh, the pocket hole machine, let me tip this camera down a little bit. Or you know what, I might get that camera from up the other end. No, nope, not happening. It's going to be too awkward to get that one down here. Maybe I should get another camera so I could have it sitting up here as well. What I'll do is I'll just bring it, these over the back. And the whole assemble, assembly whoop, there, and I hope I haven't lost it. Nope, still good. Uh, and tip down a little. Okay, that'll give you more of an indication of what I'm doing. There you go. So this is hooked up by compressed air. Um, and there's a clamp here. As soon as I pull this, the clamp gets pushed down onto the piece of timber that I'm putting the pocket hole in by compressed air, so a compressed air ram. And then the drill is pneumatic drill underneath here, pushes up. I have a dust extraction system under there and I will turn the dusty on and you'll hear it sucking through here. <laughs> That's great. So I'm going to punch in around about five pocket holes down the side, either side and maybe four across there. And you watch how quick it is. So I do either side, then the center, and then I just halve that. The compressor's turned itself on outside. See that? Nice and quick. And again. Now I don't go right to the end of the board. I'm putting pocket holes about here. If you go right there, it's going to be a hell of a problem. 
because you'll never get the drill in to tighten them up, to put the screws in. And the ends, I might just go three on the sides. Well done. All pocket holes. Turn this off again. Now I have to do, I've got to do the sides of the cabinet. So give me a second, I'll grab those. Now the sides, just thinking about it, the sides are going to have dominoes in and I just draw on them where it's going to go. The sides aren't going to have any pocket holes in it because they, um, I don't want to see the pocket holes from the side. So I need the long ones. Uh, that is the back. Okay, that's the front. This one here, you can see I've written on it pocket holes, been smudged out a little bit. So I'm going to do two either side. And I've got these little swing stops. I don't know if you can see those there. So I'll turn the machine back on, the dusty back on. So that has allowed me to do those two. And on the always remember to have, have the right side facing down, otherwise you're going to be in trouble. That's exactly right, Peter. There you go. So two there and two there. And I think I think that's all the pocket holes I need to do. Tip this back up again. See, so we can see Zoe's sign up there. <laughs> um, um, let me see. That's the older model of the Craig form. The new one is much less expensive. No, well, this was the only one that was available when I bought this. They didn't have the electric model then. This was the cheapest of the pneumatic ones. They have ones that do seven holes at a time. They were crazy, unbelievable. Um, so it all depends on where you jump in along the timeline. Okay, so I have that, I have that. The two sides, the top. I'm going to switch cameras and move up to the other end. And so I'm going to be um, away from what you guys are seeing. Now, I'm just going to have a think here. But let me see if I'll go Carl Cam or whether I'll go the side. I think I'll go the side one, which is, my mouse is being a bit crazy. There we go, switching over to there. All right, now I'm not gonna be able to see anything on the monitor. Well, hold on a second. Let me change what I just said there. I'm gonna spin the screen around and hopefully I'll be able to see what's happening indeed I can all right and I'll be able to switch cameras from down here <laughs> what a world what a world okay so here I am you can see what I'm doing there if I'm looking up there it's because that's where the monitor is so I can see what's going on all right all good now, I need to, this is where I was just doing a couple of tests this morning. Um, I need to put some dominoes in. I've set the domino up. For people that don't know what a domino is, it's this bad boy here. Domino is a mortising machine. So it creates a mortise for a slip tenon to go in. So they're also called dominoes as a slip tenon. Uh, now, let me have a look here. There is my draw front. I need to take that off first. So I'll do that over at the, over at the jointer. And cameras, I've got the mouse down here. 
This is an education. Camera, where are we? It will be this one and I'll switch him over there and spin this around again. Having a look at my beard. And I think you should be able to see the jointer there. It lets you travel around and see what's happening, what I'm up to. So I've got the jointer set at half a millimeter. I'm going to take the slightest amount off on this. I'm just looking at the grain direction. Very important when you're jointing to make sure this one is going to go this way. So the grain is actually coming from the high point down this way. I'm exaggerating it. So as I'm going across, that's how it's going to happen. It's going to cut. If I had it the other way around and the grain was going up this way, I'd get a lot of tear out. So, you, you know, you don't do that. All right, so jointer. There you go. It's nice and clean and the shiny, shiny finish is gone. That's beautiful timber. This is Jarrah. This is the West Australian timber. Absolutely beautiful. Next thing I've got to do really, I think, is trim that off. See the edge? I need to clean that up. So I'm going to use a flush trim bit and I'll spin the camera around again. Seeing that's all we're going to be using the... I've, I have cables coming out of the back of this monitor. So that's why you're getting a little bit seasick. And I can see there. I'll take this one down so I can see through. Better. Good. All right. Should change the camera down to that one. And so we go to this one here and transition. I'm hoping it's still coming through and everything's fine. All right. Now, I'm going to clean this off first. So, I'll put the other dog there. This, this bench is fantastic. If you weren't aware, it's just, it's, it's magic. This, this is the easiest way to hold long pieces. I can put another clamp down the end. It's the apron on this thing that sets it apart from anything else. There we go. Perfect. I'm going to move it along because I don't want to hit that and I've got that one bolted in. Let's move that to there. So everything's working in conjunction with each other. The clamp's working, the Festool uh, anti-slip is working, the dogs are working. This is held perfectly. I could use this in a, um, in a kitchen or a dining room and have no fear of scratching the table because it's got the cushion strips on the legs as well, or the anti-slip, I should say. I've got a heap set up here, so I have to be aware of what I'm doing and not make any mistakes. All right, so I'm going to use the router. And this is the same one that Paul Robson won. Not the exact one, but it's, you know, it's the same kind of machine. The Paul Robson one um, from Stanley Black & Decker, who were very, very generous to give one as a giveaway. This is fantastic. This has got a turret there with an adjustable. So I've got this cutter now set absolutely perfect. So even if it doesn't... Even if it's um, a little bit out, it's not going to cut into the melamine. Well, that's, that's my hope. <laughs> uh, what have I got to do next? Plug this into the dust extractor. And there's something else you may not be aware of. Uh, Festool dust extractors do play with other manufacturers' tools. So if you've got... Uh, some of their gear and some of someone else's gear and you're thinking, oh, might have to use their dust extractor with it. No, you don't. Also with this, you'll notice here, and this is pretty important, these things come standard with a second 
skin on the dust port. Now I cut that second one off to let that slide on. It doesn't hold extremely well, but it will work. Okay. And make sure that it's turned off. Yep, it is. Plug this in. I probably don't really need to do this, but yeah, why not? Why not, I say? I need some eye muffs. Again, we've got a picture of, of uh, Trevor Broadbent uh, has sent in, I think that's his name, has sent in a picture. And I need to remember to keep talking ordinarily, normal. So we're going to clean this off. And eventually I'm going to put a round over on it. But I need it to be the same plane right the way through. So when you're touching it, you don't feel it. Right. Um, this way. That's pretty good. There's something I need to say at this point, and that is, I'm not going to go around the corner and go that way, which was how I would ordinarily go, because the cutter is turning this way and will chip it out. Now, the best thing to do is to approach from that side and come back towards you. So the cutter is turning and it's taking ever so slight cuts off the end grain. Do you get that? Instead of just chunking it all out. This way you don't need as much. You don't need a, um, a sacrificial piece on the back. That's just a little tip as I'm going along. So that's going that way. So this way I'm going to go that direction. Let's see if it <laughs> actually works. I'll come down low for it. The other thing to be aware of is that you're going with the cutter, so anything that centrates is going to want to run ahead with you. Other, the other way you're going against it. So you have to be careful. You've got to be in control. And at the end you can go back the other way. See that? That's perfect. I'm going to run it down the other side the normal way. Now there was the tiniest little bit of masking tape still left on there. So I think I have a chisel here somewhere. And I'll clean that off. But how easy is it with that bench? Why am I talking with the headphones on? <laughs> it really is. It's just so easy. Uh, where are we? Chisel, David. Where did you put it? Oh, look, if you can't find one, get another one. There's be another one in here. I've been using both systems. I've been using the Sorby Pro Edge and the Triton, and they're both fantastic. You know, if, if I was a turner, a wood turner, definitely the Pro Edge. 
if I was just a guy on a shed with a chisels and planes, I'd get the Triton. Uh, some people, Derek has made a comment, one person at least, has made a comment that um, he's not overly convinced with a hollow grind because it doesn't leave as much meat there uh, on the cutting edge to, to reinforce the edge, where with the Pro Edge, the Sorby Pro Edge, it does leave more there behind it, so you know, maybe that makes it stronger. He's got both types uh, as well, so it's not as though he's talking off his hat. Look at that. I'm going to find that, and I'm going to switch to Carl Cam without sticking myself in the eye with the chisel. And the next one down. Look, that's all right, considering how far away down the end there that is. I'm amazed I saw that. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm doing the ever so slightest to take off the last little bits of glue and masking tape. Oh, that's beautiful. Do you get, do you get a buzz out of doing this stuff? I do. And then when people use it, they say, hey, that looks nice. Oh, don't do that, David. I nearly took the tape off. So that's that side done. And let's give it a run down this side. Don't go past the edge. Done. And as I was saying, the ends, the ends look fantastic. I don't know if you can see that. I shouldn't really put things up close to the camera like that because I know from previous experience it's never worked. Now I need to move this to here and switch the cameras back. Where are you? I think it's that one. Transition. There we go. So I've just put this dog down here, which means I can put that there and pull that up tight. It ain't going anywhere. And I'm going to put a domino in here and I'm working from the top. So on the domino, I'll just switch some things over so it's ready to go. So you know what it's like when you're about to do something and all of a sudden, yeah, I'm not going to because another machine is plugged in. I want that one there. I want the lead from the domino, which is here. Move a few things out of the way. Now also you'll see that I have a couple of attachments that I've made on my domino. I've got the 700 and I'm using it with a six millimeter cutter. And I've made a plate that goes underneath. I'll show you quickly. So I'm using the RTS 500, which is just there. That's the RTS 500. That's an extender that makes the small cutters work in this fellow. And I also have this plate here. So now I, when I've set this machine to 20 millimeters, I've set this machine to 20 millimeters in depth. This plate is the right depth to give me center on melamine. So I made this specifically for using a six mil cutter because the rule of thumb with a tenon is one third the stock, the tenon is one third the thickness of the stock and away you go. Now I'm going to put the domino in there. I've set the machine to a 15 millimeter plunge because melamine is only 16 millimeters. So there we go, the 15 mil plunge and I'm going to do 25 millimeters so I can switch between like that. It's very, very nice. Um, and I need to put the airline on it and it's hooked up onto auto start. And what else have I got? So I've got it on the tight, tight domino, tight fit. And also, 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 uh, I've got the pins here out, which means I'm going to reference off the side. I'm hoping you can see that. I'm going to reference off the side 
and I'm working from the top down. So let's see how we go. I've also got this on it underneath here. I don't know if you can see that. It's a stiff a stabilizing plate. Let's see how we go. So there you go. That's, that's my mortise and the domino is going to be a tenon and it's in perfectly from the side and down from the top. I'm going to do the same on this side. We've got to hurry up and get into it. But I'm going to work from the other side now, still from the timber side down. So I'm using the other pin. You might have heard me catch that a little bit as I took it out. Yeah, ever so slightly, but it's still good all the way down the center is fine. I'm going to put that in there again and just clean it. Done. Okay, so that's that done. Now I need to now put dominoes in the sides and you can see I've drawn little pictures so I'll take the clamp off there I don't need those on there anymore I'll move that back out of the way this is set up for if I have time I was going to show you something else uh, domino in there so I'll put these guys here just to steady it so I know that I'm going in there. I will flip it over because that masking tape has thickness. Actually, the advantage of having masking tape on there is I can move my label anywhere I want. So that's brilliant. That's the side I wanted it on. I'll put the clamp back in. Done. Okay, so I'm working from the right-hand side now, going down on this one. This is where it, it really is an advantage to label everything. What didn't I do? I'm still at 15, so I need to sneak this back to 25 now because it's a 40 millimeter domino that I'm putting in there. All right, here we go. There you go. Now I'm dominoing because I didn't want to see on the join any pocket holes and melamine does not take glue very kindly. So this one is working from that side. So I'm going to work from the left hand side now. This is the top. Because I drew it there, that's where it's got to go. Okay, all of those are done, which means I can start assembling and I'm going to assemble it here. So I'll bring this camera over. How good is it having these cables? And I can do all this stuff like so. I'll move that up there. I don't know if I'm going to have time to do that part. Maybe next week. There's always next week. And there you go. I found, <laughs> I found the chisel I was looking for. Up out of the way. Now, before I do that, I have to put the edge strip on three pieces. So that's one, two, three. Let's do that now. Move the camera again. Plug this in. Get the iron to heat up while I'm waiting. Time is good. I've got a quarter to. We've got 15 minutes left to go. This great. Very, very happy. All right, tip that up again, push it over there a bit further to about there. Okay, you can see me here. Hello. <laughs> um, 
where am I up to, David? Okay, so take those out for the second. I want edge strip on these. Now, because my domino is going at the top, this has all got to be edged on that one. These can go in here. These are from Yellow Box Shed. Yeah, I love supporting the people that support the channel, especially if it's a good product. And John's stuff is terrific. There we go. How cool is that? Edge tape. This is just iron on. I bring it along, I tear it off till, so I've got enough. The iron should be just about warm enough. This is an old iron. I don't use any paper on it. You know, some people use brown paper, parchment paper. That's fine. This iron has always stayed pretty clean. For me, you can see how clean the base is. And let's... Not the best way to check the heat, but it works. All right, here we go. Make sure it's dead flat. Move it backwards and forwards a bit. Roll it over about 15 degrees and then 15 degrees the other side. That concentrates the heat and at either end. That concentrates the heat. And then a cork block. To push it on. Don't use the side that the label was on. It's got glue on it and it'll mess up the side of your work. And that's no good. Trim the ends off. Did that get in there all the way? No. What's it catching on? Ah, I've got to bring it up ever so slightly. It was just missing. That's better. That's better. Same at the other end. Don't get your fingers in the way. They are scissors. On my edge trimmer, or the, uh, this little manual one, I've got a little mark there, arrow that end. This side I haven't set, this side is set. And ha this happens very quickly, you ready? Done. Beautiful, and I use a chisel to quickly ensure that it's gone all the way. It's gotta be sharp. That's done it. And the other side. And back the other direction at the other side because I started mid-span. Beautiful. That one's done. Doesn't look too bad, does it? <laughs> okay, that one's over there to get assembled. This one is the back and let's make the cleanest side the top i'll go with that one and i'm going to leave it up a little bit off the dogs with the um, with the cushion strip that i supply with these things there's no real need <laughs> it's it's pretty pretty substantial well, I wonder if we're going to have enough tape. It's not looking too hopeful, is it? Yarn's still on saying, hurry up. Ah, oh, here's a new word for you. You know, I used to do word of the week. And it was just a made up word that Vicky and I get bored in the car going shopping. So we'd just start talking rubbish. <laughs> so uh, I have one for very, very, very dark, heavy clouds in the sky and everyone knows of cumulus nimbus or cumulus nimbus or cumulus clouds well i've got a new one and it's called cumulus ominous <laughs> i'm an idiot <laughs> but we have a little giggle so i'm not i'm impossible for me to join in the chat this week This is the kind of drawer that absolutely anyone can make. You don't have to use a domino. You could use a dowel and a drill. 
if you if you don't have access to some of these swish machines that I've got makes no difference just takes a bit longer that's all and the other way and don't these don't chisels that are sharp make a difference I my history has been carpentry, joinery, you know, well, carpentry, cottage construction, and we don't have sharp, sharp chisels because we would make a wall frame, and in the bottom of the wall frame there would be the, the bottom plate of the frame. If there was a doorway, you'd just make it and then leave an opening, stand the thing up, and then you'd cut that piece of bottom plate out. And so why well, I would cut it with a handsaw down to a certain point, then I'd just get a chisel and smash straight in a concrete slab. Pfft. The thing is to get it done quick, you know, in and out. So it, uh, it was another world when I started focusing on joinery again. I did my apprenticeship as a carpenter and joiner, and most of the time it was in a joinery shop. This is the top because it's got the domino. And I was lent out every now and then to uh, construction companies. And I'd learn a bit more of the other world. Now, eh -eh. That's not going to work. What have we got over here? Just so happened to have another roll. <laughs> this is very important. You must do this first. Don't try, don't get sucked in and build the cabinet and then try and put the, the edge strip on it after because that's just not going to work. It is a pain. Here we go. Let's see. This is a different glue. Let's see how this goes. Hopefully it works just as well, or if not better. Oh, beautiful. Now this stuff is one millimeter. That's how thick it is. So when I was cutting all the parts, I made sure that I allowed for that extra millimeter of thickness. And the front is actually, um, that's, hold, that's holding well. The front is actually, um, has been, I cut it two millimeters less in width because remember that I put edge strip on the ends. So hopefully it'll all work. Got to think ahead. Here we go, my favorite part. It's always very impressive. <laughs> now, I also had someone make comment, whoop, stuff that up a bit, David. When I did a post during the week about using this instead of riding on, he says, I just ride on here. And that's fine, but it, you clean it off with methylated spirits or alcohol, but it takes forever. Sometimes it doesn't come off. so. And then also, every now and then, I would have got it wrong. And then I just peel the label off and put it on another piece and cut it again. And then I don't have this residue of, of label by pencil sitting on a piece that can confuse me, that can confuse me later on down the track. Excellent. Good. All right. Now, I think I've got all of those ready to rock and roll. I think we're going to do it in time too. Look at this. This is cool. Cool, cool, cool. Bring this camera over here. And about there, I think should be fine. Now, what do I do? Unplug the iron so we don't burn the workshop down. Get rid of that. Done. Got the base, two sides, a front and a back. So. I'm going to put it with the pocket holes facing down on my nice flat surface. That's one of the reasons I like this bench. It's a nice flat plane. I always keep it clean. Being laminate, it's easy for me to clean off. Downside, you have to be careful. You have to be careful that you don't use this for pounding on too hard. I use the big bench down the end for that. So I have the front with that sticking up and I have the front with that sticking up and I'm going to put the back 
in as well and hopefully that will fit because it's got the pocket holes at the back facing that way I need it to all to work at the front perfectly so I will possibly put the long clamps at the front to start that's good it's always a good idea see the good thing about this as well at this stage there's no glue I'm going to pull this along to there. Pull that up and then just slowly tighten that one up. It doesn't have to be too tight at the moment. If you saw the video where I did the MFT3 style um, for draw fronts on this unit under here, I made the, the drawers under there in the same manner. And they work great. Ask anyone that's done it after I did this, and they'll tell you these are just so easy to do. Only a little bit. Now I'm going to turn it over very carefully without shocking it. And that's all beautiful there. I'm flush at the front, which is exactly what I want. So now I'm going to put another long clamp on here and put the pocket hole screws. They're one inch for 16 mil you know the story you can never have too many clamps it's pretty true now I'm going to tighten that one up with a bit of force and then this one and then this one beautiful now, some people have asked do, when you're doing pocket holes, how do you clamp them so it doesn't slip? This way is great. I've got, I've got a truckload of pressure on there now. And that will definitely will not slip. I'll back that one off as a matter of fact because it's gone down the side. I'm going to raise this one up a little bit because it has nothing to counter the force. I'm going to make sure that that's perfectly in line there. Of, of the clamp being around the edge. See, there's no, there's, there is no front on this at the moment. Follow? Pocket holes. Pocket hole screws, I should say. Got that and that. So that's a Robinson or Robertson. I never get it right. I'm sure that everyone's going to jump in and help me. <laughs> I have one of these containers that I just bought whatever size I thought I'd use. So mostly it's softwoods because you use the coarse screws with this. And I'm going to use one inch because there's nothing worse than halfway through a project and you run out of that particular size, especially if you've got glue in there as well. So now I'm going to set it to possibly probably five on the CXS and see how that goes. That's pretty good. I'll take it up to six, give it a bit more bite. Got it. One inch. Has not slipped. Put them up there so we don't lose them. I'm going to finish this, so I might go over time. We're around about three minutes off the hour. So if you want to hang around and watch, fantastic. If you've got other things you've got to do, I understand. You may want to let other people know about this show because this is a totally different show than what I normally do. Now I can take those off. They're not going anywhere. John, Dave, who makes the edge banding tools you are using? Uh, Jim, I should say. I got my edge banding tools on eBay. I got them from the, where I get all my gear. I get it from Carbotech because that's where I work now and then. So I'd be an idiot. Not to buy it from them, wouldn't I? Because I get a staff discount. No. I'm not trying to promote them. I'm just letting you know the facts. All right, now I need to put a clamp across here. And I'm going to use a 600 because I don't need as much. I don't want a truckload hanging up this side and catching me. So let me see. I need to push that up ever so slightly. Well, I'll do that as I pop this on. Up 
a little. That's good. Good. And I'll put one in there to start. Beautiful. Remember, I only did that one up at clutch five. I went to another setting, on, so I thought I'd just balance it up. Um, I'll do this one, because that parallel clamp has got a pretty good grip on that. Yes, beautiful. I'll move it along to there. That'll grab those two. So I'm pointing out these two pocket holes here. I think you can see that. Good. Nice and tight. I was wondering when I was going to make these drawers whether this is going to be too much width to take a fair bit of weight. And then I realized the shelves in the cupboard are already made out of this stuff. And there might have been one and a half millimeters deflection, even with he heavy frying pans and all, you know. <laughs> I don't know what I was worried about. And so I've got a couple of other things to talk about on the show when I finish this drawer, and it's not going to take long. So if you want to hang around, as I say, I'm going to be here for another 10 minutes. I think. Might be longer. But it's just gone 12 o'clock. <clears throat> you reckon I should put the latch on that case of screws, eh? All right, now, that's looking pretty good there. Now, I need to actually pull that corner. Um, so, what I'm going to do is drop this down to the bottom. Like so. Get my mallet. I actually, no, I've got another idea. I'm going to stand this up. You guys won't be able to see this part as I'm doing this. Oh, you'll see it from there. That's okay. So I'm going to put that on here and pull that up nice and tight that way. See, the reason I'm doing this is because I need to allow room for me to actually put. The, the screws in there. If the clamp's over the top of it, I can't get to it. Um, <clears throat> the 600s. And I can put this right at the edge. No, I can't because I've put that stupid clamp in the way, haven't I? I'm going to pull it up and then relax it. I'm going to pull it up to pull it in, and then I'll relax these clamps and pull that one up really tight. Just a matter of thinking as you're going. I haven't got the other clamp. I'll have to use an 800. There she goes. Oh. You know, it's one of those things with clamps. You think, oh, that's tight, until you put the clamps on it, and then you realize, who are you kidding? He's got a truckload more to go. That's feeling good there. Tighten that one right up. And that should hold it when I relax these ones. See what I mean about this extra length? The correct size clamps make life a whole lot easier. Oh, that's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. All right, a couple of screws in here. Don't you go down there. So also with these drawers, you don't have to make them the full depth. These are basically trays. They're 100 millimeters overall, so inside they'll be 84. And you know what? That's enough. I can stand things that are 200 millimeters tall in that easy. And it lets me see in there correctly as well. So they're not all backed off if I'm looking at something right at the back of the drawer. Okay, so that one's done. And 
You want to know who won? Whilst I've still got you there, I'll let you know who won. And then we're going to do the dominoes and put the last pocket hole screws in along here. Where is my mouse? Chris, when cutting melamine, should you use tape on all cuts? You can do. Uh, Rick says the only ones that show better latch that case, uh, bonus show great. Looking at the fast cap edge banding kit. Okay. Um, who won? Who won? Who won? Where's my run sheet? Down the back here. Okay. Uh, the combination set. Here we go. I'll get it out. This is the one from Carbotech that they've sp sponsored the show with. And it's a very, very nice set. That's the set. And this is going to Steve Oliver. So Steve, I will send you an email later on today or tonight or when I wake up <laughs> after the kids have been here. Steve Oliver, you've won that. Um, and if you want to see down in the, uh, in the show more section in the bottom of, underneath this video, the embellishment uh, cases that are made from We Us and Co, do that. Uh, I'm going to keep going with this. I'll leave the ca cameras running. I want to get this finished. Uh, where am I? I think I've got dominoes in here. There was a couple of sixes and some glue. Yep, and a glue brush. And this, see these things? The glue sticks on them and you just peel it off like a reptile. You'd swear you're going to break it, but it doesn't. It's silicon. Every now and then you'll snap one, but there you go. How cool is that? All right, a bit of glue up here. And it's a waste of time putting glue on the rest of it. It's only in the tenon because this is going to be to melamine, so it's a waste of time. Oh, there's a little bit of jar at the top. But, uh, you know, I was having a bath and thinking how to do these things. Um, I should really get my mallet. Oop, that's a stuffed one. We won't use that. Oh, the last six millimeter that I've got. How, um, that's crazy. I'll get a mallet. <sighs> So if you're enjoying the show, if you'd like me to keep doing these kind of things, help me out. <laughs> help me out because I could be doing other things. As I say, uh, I do this because I enjoy it. I enjoy sharing information with people. And because some people ask me how to do things, and this is easier than addressing every individual person on their own because that's just too much work. So they say Patreon's there, buy my plans from the benches, uh, buy the benches, um, buy stuff through my eBay links if you want to, uh, Patreon, there's so many ways. You can either do it absolute outright, there's the money, or you can buy something. Here we go. That's going on perfectly there. What about this guy up here? Come on. Beautiful. Lovely, lovely, lovely. A little bit of a crack there, but that's okay. Next time I'm going to set the domino to a little bit deeper for the rest of the drawers. So now I put a clamp on here again and I can finish off the pocket hole screws that way. I should have got another 600 while I was down there. <clears throat> and thank you so much to everyone who does support the show. It's fantastic. Um, <clears throat> screw. And I've got a couple of things to show you as well right at the end of the show if you're interested in watching. Put that one in between the two, that'll pull the pair up.
Now the thing is, when I did the, the uh, name for the show, I said draws with an accent. That's not me speaking in uh, um, Australian accent. That's that piece of Jarrah is the accent across the top. I thought it looks quite nice. It's just a piece of scrap I had lying around. You know, people say, oh, I made this out of a bit of scrap. Sometimes I don't believe them. I think they went out and bought the stuff. Okay, now the last thing, of course, of course, that the domino is a glue joint. We'll undo this and we'll put it around the front here now. Being a parallel clamp, I can do this like so. That's how you clamp the corner on a parallel clamp. And the last one here. Done. That is my draw completed. There you go. Nice little front on it. I'll run a six millimeter round over right the way along the front and on the inside. I'll start about a half an inch in so I don't hit these guys. And there you go. That's a nice soft to touch. This will take all the punishment. This doesn't. This will take all the punishment. I'll have cans sitting in there. I will lay them flat. And so when Vicky says, what do you want for dinner? And I'll say, you know, how about we have mushrooms on toast or uh, corn or, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm being crazy now, but you know what I mean. It just makes it so much easier to find things, especially if you're cooking. Okay, so I'm going to let that one dry. I'm going to go down to the other end, switch the cameras over. When I find my mouse, there it is. What a mess in here. Who's been in here? I make sure that the iron is turned off. <clears throat> Where are we? I'm going to switch cameras. Do this kind of thing again, Bob. Not a problem. I'll switch cameras to there. Switch this over here. Oh, I'm just about stuffed. <laughs> tilt, tilt this up a little. Where are we up to now? Uh, some of the things I wanted to show you. Uh, here's Trevor with his uh, eye muffs on and his air stealth mask from Trend. I showed you that um, when I went to the Easter show, here's John's mum, Nolene. She won first prize in, I think that's called tatting, um, but fantastic work. I think she made all of the grid as well that it went into. Beautiful work. Um, what else have we got here? Ah, oh, going down to the show. This is the local railway station. What's this like? These are just, this is how it is at the local railway station where I live. There's cushions on the chairs. There's a bookcase full of books. You can borrow them, put them back when you're finished. See, I keep on telling you, Australia is the ama most amazing place. No, I'm not on eBay, Ken. Um, at the show, these looked yummy. <laughs> and then there was these tractors on display, and I thought, wow, they're massive. To give you an idea of how big these things are, I said to Vicky, take a shot of me beside one of the tracks. <laughs> uh, yes, they are the new... Bessie clamps, and then at the show also some of the things I love to see is the draft horses, and these are the um, some of the tools that they had there. Um, and then what else have we got here? The I'm going to do We Us and Co's video. Be careful, it might be a little bit louder. Hold on, mate. Okay. Okay, so Ken's just made a point there that I said eBay links. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said eBay links if I said it. Uh, they would have been Etsy, E-T-S-Y. I've got Etsy links and also 
um, Amazon links, th that kind of stuff. And also, if you go to stantonbench.com.au, uh, you'll find that there's links there as well. And you can purchase the plans or you can purchase a bench there. I send to Australia and New Zealand, and I've got Luke over in, um, in the States. He sends out to Canada and all over the States. Uh, we have a, another thing down here. This, is, this was an amazing organ that was totally timber and it had timber pillow, bellows in the back. I will do a quick section of this and you can have a quick listen. And the last thing I wanted to show you is the wood shop. I've got some stuff here from the uh, horse jumping, but this wood shop, this was the uh, this was the final, and it was so much fun to watch. It's about five minutes, and you wait for the count. You'll see each axman relay team will start at a certain time in the count. So the first guy started at 60, and the last guy started at 169. Watch this. 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, See the guys down at the left hand side? Not haven't started yet. He's just standing there with his axe. Still standing around. These are 300 millimeter diameter lock. Here he goes. The guy's already started working on the tree, and that other team down the end, the top left hand side of the screen, is still sitting there doing nothing. Now he's cutting out little spots for the planks to go into the tree. So they have to climb all the way up to the top. He will stop as they go. <laughs> he's still standing there. Getting ready. He's looking a bit nervous. Go. These guys are half up the top. This guy. There he goes. There he goes. So they work one side of the tree and get halfway through on the chop. Then they have to come all the way down and go up again on the other side. You're watching as they come down, it's like they're on springboards. The guy down the end's already on the tree. Look at that. Near the top. Look at this. Up he goes. Look at this guy down here. These guys started at 169. He's up to the second up he goes. Up. 
We're ready. We're going to go to the top of the tree. So the pumps at each pump, they come into the rear of the tree. Will they have the stamina and the strength? We go down there to number eight. I wonder if they use the sword and throw edge to sharp. I'm going to go down there. I'm just 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 going to First start, he's putting his third plank in. He's not looking too healthy. Last start has just put the first plank in on the other side. Remember, there's a count of 100 between these two teams. Finishing off on right hand, and the winner finished off on the right hand. The other guys doing the left hand spin. He's stuck. Let's bring home up there as well, number eight, Dave Hodges. Also, Brian Wagner, he's into the back of that block. Last go, down the end, he's finished. Wow. Four still going. Three still going. Still going. Still going. Still going. Still still going. Number four, let's still go. these guys. Number five, and also down there on number eight. Let's bring home Dan Hodges up on the very end three. Also, we've still got to go. Come on, let's help out number four. There we go. Down from there we've got, yes, he's completely there. So now at the moment, we're bringing home the number four and number eight. Everyone's watching. We're going to give them the college for the moment. How the action is stuck. Let's just get to the final one there, number four. We've got Lockman Bryce, his team. Phil Waters, Daniel Chris Holden, Lockman Bryce. They started at 82. It'll move. It's going. Get ready. One more. One more hit, buddy. There you go. Now they think it will be very close. This map will be a board sign and sit there. Down with the number two there. Lindsay Hewitt. Here's your seven. That'll do it. Thanks, everybody, for dropping in. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you know of other people that might be interested in watching the show, by all means, share the channel. Um, get them to subscribe. Click that bell. Remember to click that bell and make it have that little wiggly lines beside it, and that will let you uh, know next time I start something up. And uh, there we go. What have we got? Intro and text. I shall see everyone next week. Be nice to each other. Look after yourselves. Have a great week.